Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do an outdoor animal tour and show you guys all of our animals outdoors. And the reason we're doing this one is because we have a new outside addition. We have a new outdoor aviary we're gonna show you. But first, we're gonna feed some of the box turtles. We've shown you guys these ones before, but uh, we're gonna recap with them. So I got some food here for them we're gonna put down and see if we can find them. Where are they hiding? I bet you someone's under that orange one right there. Probably. Usually Sage likes to hang out there. Nope, nobody in that one. Really? Where are you guys hiding? There's one. Okay. There we go. Sage. This is Sage. But sage, sage is pretty shy, so we'll just Very put shy. Sage down. Oh, here's here's one. Time. Here's this time. Hi. So, and then we have one more in here, somewhere. But these. <laughs> basil. Where's basil? Well, probably. Oh, no, not there. Basil is the most friendly one, so I'm surprised there Basil. There he is. Oh, there you go. Hi, Basil. So they are all herbs, named after herbs. <laughs> okay, so here's what's really cool. So Sage and Time are older than me and Gabby's ages put together. Okay, so they are both like 80 years old. So if you didn't see the videos we did on them before, uh, they were brought to us by a woman who could no longer care for them and her mother had them before her, and then her grandmother had them before her. And they were uh, found in their yard by the grandmother uh, when she was a kid. And in 1946. 1946, absolutely crazy. So uh, box turtles are well known. They're pretty famous for being very, very long lived. And uh, there's all kinds of stories about people finding them with like Civil War inscriptions on the shell and things like that. Oh, there's, he's eating over there. <laughs> so what's crazy is these two uh, were kept the same amount of time under the same conditions and they look drastically different okay but honestly all three of our turtles are all rescues and they all look messed up none of these look the way a florida box turtle is supposed to look they all have shell deformities and growth issues and things like that and uh, that's just due to uh even if it's the best intention in proper captive care even with the best intentions and so that's why like uh this one's shell doesn't even close up they're supposed to be able to completely seal this off and uh she can't even do that so this is something that does uh happen with captive care sometimes so you can see the scarring on the shell right here and so we think uh that basil here was attacked by a dog now they're called box turtles because when they close up their shell they have a hinge on the plaster in there and they close up like a box so they can seal off and hide all their limbs in there to protect them pretty darn cool so as you can see, we try to keep the enclosure as natural as possible. It's very grown in, lots of vegetation, lots of hiding places for them to hide out from the rain or from the heat of the sun in the day. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next outdoor enclosure. So here is my chicken coop where they sleep at night, but we're gonna show you the chickens on the other side. Uh, but right now we're gonna come over here to Petrie. Hi Petrie. Hi buddy. So if you didn't see the uh, video we did all about Petrie, Gabby actually caught Petrie here in Florida. He was flying all around South Florida for a couple of weeks. And so they're native to Africa. I just saw him when I was in Botswana last month, I saw wild Petries all over the place. He's a red bill hornbill. And so uh, Gabby actually caught him. We think he escaped from somebody. We're not sure, we never did figure it out, but now he has a beautiful outdoor aviary that he calls home and he seems pretty happy in there. Now, because we caught Petrie, he's not as friendly as Zazu. You know, Zazu we raised from a baby. Petrie is wild from Florida, and we don't know his history before that. So he's definitely not as friendly. He's definitely happier outdoors and does not like being touched or interacted with. But he seems pretty happy in here for the most part. I mean, he sits out here and vocalizes all day. Just <laughs> we hear it when first thing in the morning. So he seems pretty happy about it. But, um, but yeah, check out the other video that we did showing how we got him and setting him up and everything like that. Now we're gonna walk over here and uh, we're gonna show you guys our baby tortoises. We'll just move these food bowls real quick. And let me prop up their top. Okay. 
All right, so, and here we have our baby red foot tortoises. Over there. There's all of them. <laughs> okay, so. All right, you wanna hand me their bowl? All right, well guys. There you go. Their hatch date was, I think, two days ago. Oh yeah, so, so they're, they're a year and two days? Yeah. Yep. They did have some food this morning, so maybe they're not too hungry right now. I wow, love the- his head is really red, huh? I know, I love the difference in their coloration. Wow, these ones are like yellow, and that one's like super red. There we go. So those are our baby redfoots, and here are our aquatic turtles over here. I'm gonna clear a space in this uh, aquatic vegetation. All the fish are already ready. We'll throw some some pellets down for them. There you go, guys. And here comes one of the Indian spotted turtles. There they go. See if you can grab the Indian spotted out just to show everyone how pretty he is. All right. Oh, he's gotta, gotta come out a little bit. Isn't it crazy that we started with literally five fish? <laughs> like, we started with five fish and now we have probably a hundred? There's so many of them in here. So many. They're just thriving in here. What kind of fish are they? They're, uh... They're, I think they're mollies. Yeah. Like the orange. Oh, there's a little baby. Hi, baby. We do have a little baby in here. Covered in algae, oh my goodness. Look at this little guy. Little, so cute. Little fur ball here. He was even smaller when we got him. Um, he was found, I think, at a Dunkin' Donuts parking lot in like a storm drain. So yeah. it brought him to us. So the little algae he's got on him doesn't, doesn't hurt him though. Where's the Indian spotted? So this is our Indian spotted turtle. These are a uh, really, really beautiful species of turtle and uh, gonna get a lot bigger than this too. So pretty. This is a 500 gallon tub. And uh, so we had these turtles originally inside, inside of an aquarium and we moved them outdoors so you can get some natural sunlight and obviously they're getting bigger too. So that makes it easier. But I really like to just sit out here all the time. I'll pull up one of the chairs and prop my feet up on the side of the pond and just kind of hang out here and just kind of watch them and enjoy being outside. All right, so we saw the box turtles, the baby tortoises, the aquatic turtles, Petrie, and then now we're gonna go see Quasi. So Quasi's a little bit nervous. I just fed him a big meal yesterday, so I don't know if he's gonna come over and say hi or not, but he is our special needs rhino iguana with scoliosis. So his spine is all kinked up and that's how he hatched out of the egg. And uh, he does pretty well though. He eats, he poops, he walks around, he climbs up on his little basking platform. So overall, he seems pretty happy. He seems to be doing pretty well. And so his quality of life is good, right? Uh, so I'm gonna try to toss him a blueberry. Maybe he'll be interested. He's looking at it. He loves oh, <laughs> yes. He loves blueberries. It's like his favorite. There you go, buddy. Did you see that one? He's looking for it. There he goes. That's his favorite thing, huh?
He's so cute. He's he's very goofy. Here, I'll throw him a piece of lettuce. I probably you want lettuce? First. Nah, he just wants the blueberries. Yeah. Now, we also just make quasi shirts that say uh, perfectly imperfect. And so those are really cute and adorable. And so we'll have to uh, link that. Oh, you just got that blueberry right there. <laughs> yeah. So we'll have to link that in the description on this video so you guys can get a quasi t-shirt. All right, so we'll leave him be. And uh, let's go check out our newest outdoor addition. And that is going to be the new outdoor bird aviary. Look at these guys. Elmo! Are you happy outside? So, check this thing out, huh? That's pretty awesome. We've got this huge outdoor bird aviary we just picked up on OfferUp, okay? Gabby's been uh, bargain hunting a lot on there. So we just got this. And so we have all of our parrots that are normally in the bird room are all out here getting some fresh air and some sunlight. And uh, everybody seems pretty happy in there. Elmo! Yeah. So this aviary is massive. Like I'm six foot five and uh, the aviary at the top of this thing is eight feet tall. So we'll go ahead and join here with everybody. Hi. This Hello. is Chris's new bedroom. Hello. Hi. Hi Blue, you want pets? Oh. Blue's very temperamental. I want to bite you, but I want you to pet me. There you go, Blue. We got, so we got Blue, we got Lucky, we got Elmo, we got Cupid, we got Sweet Pea. It's a party in here. So as you can see, the, the aviary is very big, very spacious, and uh, it makes it so they can actually fly around in here too, which is pretty awesome. And we're really hoping it helps Elmo out. So if you haven't seen our other videos on Elmo, he's, he's the one right there. And so Elmo has a severe plucking issue. Uh, his background is very traumatic. And uh, so when we got him, when we got him, he already had uh, his naked chest and everything. And uh, just, it's easier just to check out the video we already did on him talking about his plucking issue. Um, but we're hoping that outside sunlight and fresh air and all these things to look at are going to really help him deal with his stress better. I think he's talking. Is he? I am 99% sure I just heard him say something. While I'm talking, he was talking? Yeah. I think he, I thought it was like a, a neighbor talking. No, that's definitely him. Are you talking, Elmo? Hi. Hello. Elmo. Elmo. Are you going to come over? Are you coming over? Oh, no. Here you go. He got scared. <laughs> Blue says pet me. Elmo. What are you doing, Elmo? Hi. Hello? Hello? Elmo? What you doing? Mm. Mm. Elmo. Watch out, Blue. Ah, Blue's attacking me. <laughs> she wants little, that scratches. Blue says, pet me or die. <laughs> Give her a little scratch. You want a little scratches? Yeah. yeah, that's what you want, huh? You want a little head scratches. There you go, Bluebird. There you go, Bluebird. You like your pets? You like getting pets? Elmo! Elmo! Lucky Bird just decided to come over here and join me. Hi, Lucky. And goodbye. So we just set the aviary up today and got everybody in it. Blue wants more pets over here. Hi, Bluebird. Hey, bluebird. So we have a hibiscus bush, and uh, we have another little bush over there, and a fern over here. We have a water dish where they can take baths. We have some food on the floor for foraging, and then we have food in a dish over here too, and then another water bowl. And look at Cupid over there, looking like an angel with all the, the light coming in around him. Sweet Pea, she's so angry. Yeah, Sweet Pea's a little demon. Oh look at Elmo, he's such a sweetheart. He wants to come over. You can see, like, he wants to come over, but they scared. Elmo, you're okay. 
I know we have a ton of new subscribers, so just a, a really quick recap on Elmo. Um, we were contacted from a former zookeeper who worked at a facility where Elmo, who is previously named Ricky, was attacked by a hawk twice. This is the story we were told. So he was kind of just like put in a small cage, uh, sort of like solitary confinement, kind of just in like a dark cement room with not a lot of enrichment, and he just kind of blind. He's missing toes from chewing them off. He has two giant holes under his wings from self-mutilating. And uh, it's likely he will never grow his feathers back. So we kind of just let him do his thing. He trusts Chris way more than he trusts me just because I'm the one that catches him and medicates him and takes him to the vet. We want to have him hate one person and at least like another person. So Chris is the person that he trusts the most. Um, very rarely he'll like step up to Chris and let him take him outside and talk to me. Yeah, but he we, knows words. We can't really touch him or anything, so we kind of just let him do his thing. And he's 12 years old, and he really likes being outside. So we're hoping that this really helps him. Yeah. All right. Well, you ready to let me out? So I can't get out of here. <laughs> that was Elmo laughing. <laughs> Is that funny, Elmo? All right, so now we'll go ahead and go see Petunia and the chickens and the tortoises. Mm. Petunia, oh man, chicken already took my lettuce. <laughs> Petunia, yeah, you want some lettuce? Yeah, hi Petunia. Look at that figure. So this is my favorite place to just hang out and be is out here in our little barnyard area. So this is where we have all the chickens and petunia and uh, the tortoises out here. Look at, look at these chickens. There you go. Yeah. So I love my chickens. Gabby always makes fun of me for it, but I love just hanging out with them and spending time with them. They're really cute. And of course, everybody loves petunia. Hi, Big Big. Hi, Tony. So, Petunia is another rescue, and uh, so she was actually dumped on the side of... I don't have anything. <laughs> Look at them. Uh, she was dumped on the side of the road, and so when we first got Petunia, she was emaciated and, like, probably... What, was she 40 pounds? Yeah. So now Petunia is uh, 100 pounds, and uh, doing very, very well, very happy outside, and has all of her little chicken friends right here. I just want to point out that your chicken wire that's supposed to keep them off of that is not working. She's literally like on a tightrope. Yeah, they like just just walking on it. They laugh at my my chicken wire there. <laughs> so I try to put that up to keep them from uh, climbing into the neighbor's yard. Hi, hi guys. Well, we have some food for the tortoises. We just gotta okay. find the tortoises. So well, let me find tortoises first. Look at that, delicious. They love this little tarp. Bortolini oh. and rigatoni. Oh, oh, the chickens are stealing the blueberries. Oh my god, look at them. Ah, no. They're ravenous. What do we do? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those are for the tortoises. Hey. Hey. Get out of there. Hey, baby. <laughs> That's not for you. That's not for you. They steal all of the blueberries. They, oh, look at them go. They love blueberries. Alright, I guess we're just letting it happen. Yeah, I mean, so much for that. <laughs> Get out of here. Go. Go. You have vultures. Alright, that's how we get the chickens away from the tortoises. We just give them seeds. <laughs> So these are our adult redfoot tortoises and the babies are uh, separated because, oh my goodness, here come the chickens again. <laughs> Get out of here. So the babies are uh, much smaller and uh, you know they can be picked on and they could even be seen as food. So we keep the babies separated, but um, yeah, so these are the adult redfoots. You stay out. This is not for you. You have a whole food dish. Is that Emma? Where is this Emma? <laughs> okay, look, look. Here, you want that? Go over there. Go eat it over there. Leave, leave the tortoises alone. Oh my goodness. Go. Get out of here. So why don't, why don't you uh, tell where they came from? 
Sure. So, uh, rigatoni actually came from the same gentleman that we got basil from. He donated both of them to us. He was aging. He had a really big collection of turtles and tortoises and was just looking to downsize. Tortellini was actually found walking around Miami and FWC contacted a wildlife center and they contacted me and Chris and asked if we wanted him. And then Fern came from somebody who rescued him um, actually up north. Do you remember where it was? Like, mm, was it mm, Michigan? I think it was. Michigan. I, I don't remember. I'm in contact with his dad oh still, but he basically <laughs> drove him like 27 hours to us just so we could have him and he could be outside with other tortoises. So he's a really special tortoise. We're really happy to have him. You guys can see the pyramiding um, and his shell, which was due to improper diet. When Brandon first rescued her, he couldn't even walk. He was like extremely deformed. It had just like no muscle tone and uh, he rehabbed him and kept him for a long time and then just after the rehab process wanted him to have a really good home so we're, we're just so happy to have him and he's thriving with the other two as well yeah he did a really great job of, of he really did fixing up fern there okay, yeah fern okay. is great and he's so friendly and he knows his name he literally comes when he's called and uh he'll just like walk up to chris when he's sitting down and just stare at him and wait for him to pet him so normally what we do, are these chickens, by the way, their crops are completely, you could feel it right there. Look at, you can see it. You can see like, the crop you got so much food in here. They are not starving. There is so much food. Even though they act like they're starving, they are not starving, okay? They're just very bad chickens. <laughs> oh, hey. Petunia's waiting for you to scratch her. Look at her laying down, oh. like a loaf of bread. Like a loaf of bread. Tootie, she's waiting for scratches. <laughs> Just look at that dirty nose. It's, a, it's just a lost cause with the chickens. <laughs> so normally what we do is uh, we just feed the, the uh, tortoises when the chickens are still locked up. The chickens get locked up at night in their coop, so then you can just feed the, the tortoises without the chickens there, because obviously you can see how they act. Or I also feed them uh, a lot of cactus, which the chickens aren't interested in, and the tortoises love the cactus. Guys. It's like herding chickens. Get out of here. Go. Go. <laughs> They're not afraid of you at all. They're just annoyed more than anything. Oh my goodness. You. Look at you. Get out of here. Doony, she's waiting for you to pat her. Where'd the little rake go? That one? Oh, look at a pig rake. Raking your pig is an important part of the day. Look at her tail. It goes straight up. <laughs> All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed our outdoor animal tour of the house here. I hope you got to see all of our beautiful rescue animals. And uh, make sure you leave a comment, like, subscribe. Let us know what you think, and we'll see you on our next video.